we moved into town? Board, board, board! Yeah! yeah. Board, board, board! Off, oh, Louie! Ah, oh, come on, we're just kidding. What's the matter? Can't you take a joke? Ha ha! Well, let's say something else then. To tell you the truth, I'm kind of tired of this game too. Me too, now that you mention it. Board, board, board! Yeah! yeah. Board, board, board! Ah, oh, Fooey. Hey, I know, we could. That would be fun. I got it. Let's all forget it. I know what you can do. We can. No, that would be boring. Wait, I know exactly what we should do. What? Let's go visit Geppetto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Geppetto. Who's this Geppetto character? <gasps> Who's Geppetto? Haven't you ever visited Geppetto? Geppetto is the kindly old woodcarver. The kindest and most generous person in the whole village. The shop is always open to boys and girls. They are every day dawn to dusk with hammers, knives, and chisels. They carve pipes and table legs and statues of the cake. But their favorite pastime is making toys. Beautiful wooden toys. Like puzzles with wooden fingers and wooden toes. And bright cherry cheeks. And strings that make them wave and jump and dance about. I can't wait a minute longer to see those wonderful toys. Let's go visit Geppetto! Watching someone carve toys from wooden sticks sounds boring to me. No, no, come on. Come on. Come on. When are we going to get there? Almost. In fact, here we are now. Hi, Geppetto. Oh, hello, my young friends. You've come to see me. How kind of you to visit. We love to come and visit you, Geppetto. Do you have any new toys to show us? Why, yes. In fact, I've nearly finished this handsome toy soldier. Stars and goddess, thank you, but not the most handsome toy I've ever made. Oh no, once I made a puppet who was far more handsome. Tell us. Tell us what the handsome puppet. What was his name? His name was was Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Oh, Pinocchio indeed. Pinocchio, the puppet who became a real live boy. That's impossible. Oh, my young friend, you mustn't doubt. You mustn't doubt. But that's impossible. A puppet can't become a real boy. Oh, my stars and garters, no, nothing is impossible if you wish for it. I never get what I wish for. I guess I'm just a poor little urchin. Hey! hey. That, that doesn't matter. I'm nothing but a humble old woodcarver, and I often get my wishes. Perhaps you're not wishing hard enough? Ah, oh, fooey. If you will just wish hard enough, I know your wish will come true. And you don't need a lot. Charm or a wish boat to break into. This lonely man, he has a dream to keep him company. His wish sits by him like a child just watching at his knee. If I believe with all my heart and all my doubts erase, my lonely Cricket? Hush, we'll get him to cut out. We sure will. 
And I had worked for many hours to finish a new puppet. Hmm. New puppet. You see, What, him? Yes. Oh, that guy in the front row right Yes. There? Oh, you mean this one here? Yes. Oh, what? no, he doesn't even want to come and listen to my story. Yes, he no, he really no, he doesn't. He's really over here. Really 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 oh, he's just really shy? Yes. Well, but I need someone who's like triple threat. You know, like yes. singing, choir. acting, he dancing. This choir. Yes. This choir, okay. He, he, he uh-huh. And he's a really, really good singer? Really? Okay, yeah. all right. He's a really good well, but he doesn't seem to get along with everybody. Yes. Is there any friends? Yeah. Yeah, Is your friend? Yeah. I know, I know. Give him a shot. Well, my doubting young friend, the other boys and girls have done their part to help me tell my story. Won't you help me as well? Me? Well, yes, I need just one more puppet to help tell my story, and that oh-so-special puppet, my friend, you shall be. Oh, fooey. I was very proud of this new little man, very proud indeed, for he was a most handsome puppet. But, boys and girls, there was a secret. Shh. A very special secret that I didn't realize when I started to make my new puppet. You see, there grew in the forest, deep, deep in the darkest woods, a tiny grove of enchanted trees. The late one evening, I grew on this grove, and there, in front of me, was the perfect tree for puppet making. Off my shoulder came my trusty axe, and I began to chop. That's right, boys and girls. What I didn't realize at the time was I had fashioned my favorite puppet from the trunk of an enchanted. I'm so sleepy. Me too, you know. You tomorrow. Uh, let me just finish this jeeps. <coughs> I suppose the springs can wait until tomorrow.
what is fair and just and selfless. Okay. Go to school. Oh. And learn to work. Oh, no, no, no. If not, you shall become a donkey. Hee-haw! Pinocchio, a donkey? Never! I hope not, my little friend. But remember, you must always follow your conscience if you do not wish to become a donkey. A conscience is a little voice that follows you around and tells you what is right from wrong. Something tells me you don't have a conscience, but I shall appoint one. Ah, a volunteer. <laughs> when Jiminy the Talking Cricket wakes up, he shall become your conscience and follow you everywhere. And if you become a real boy, he will be greatly rewarded. Now I must go, Pinocchio. Geppetto will soon wake up. Shall I worry about you? Don't worry, Sabrina. I'll be a real boy before you can say Pinocchio! <sighs> I hope so, Pinocchio. Goodbye, and be good. Goodbye! My new father is waking up. Time to have some fun. Sabrina, some say she's the pretty lady who lives in the forest and watches over puppets carved from the trunks of enchanted trees, but you are Pinocchio and look at you! No strings on you, almost like a real boy. I can be a real boy, Sabrina said so. That would make me very happy. Oh, bless me, indeed it would. I must give you a squeeze. Ow, you're squeezing me too tight. Uh, you shall call me father. Of course, Father. Oh, he called me Father. <laughs> Let me down! Such excitement. Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket, wake up! <coughs> All this commotion. <coughs> oh, Geppetto. Then you would have had just moved. With no strings attached. Ah! I know. Isn't it wonderful? Why, Pinocchio, with all this excitement, you must be getting hungry. Uh, but what do I have to feed you with? Well, I know, I have this pear. I was saving it for my own breakfast. But I must learn not to be selfish. We shall share it, share and share it. Ha! Ah, careful, what are you doing? Other side. For what? Who are you? Get out of here. All right, Pinocchio. Do we have to share? I'm so very hungry. Of course, my son, you shall have it all. And be sure to eat the skin, for it's very good for you. I don't like the skin. Now peel it at once. <laughs> all right, Pinocchio. I'm not really pleased with the way you're talking. I shall peel your pear, and then it shall be time for you to go to school, and, oh, my stars and gardens, you must go to school. And, of course, you shall have a brand new school book. But where shall I find the money for a brand new school book? Don't worry, fathers always find a way. Of course, my son. Now, here is your pear. And be sure to eat the core and seeds, for they're very good for you. But they're so bitter. You must eat the core and seeds. I'll hold my breath till my face turns blue. What? Then you'll be sorry. What Pinocchio? <gasps> what Pinocchio? Behave yourself. Behave. All right, Pinocchio, I will remove the core and seeds, but I am not pleased with the way you're talking. A good little boy should be grateful to have anything to eat at all. A good little boy should eat the core, skin, seeds, and all. But of course, you are not a little boy. You're still just a puppet. And 
and you will probably always be one if you don't start to behave. You're right, Father. I need to start learning to behave. Now, now, my little son, learning to behave will take time. Here is your breakfast. And while you eat it, I shall get you the money for your new school book. And while I'm away, perhaps you will dust the shop a little and take a little nap if you are tired. I shan't be too long. Now, you will behave yourself while I'm away. Yes, Father. Oh, I am sleepy. I think I'll take a nap and finish dusting when I wake up. Some role, you? Nope. What about you? No, not me. Well, then you. No way. I'll do it. Oh. <laughs> and now picture, if you will, not just this all black ensemble, but also a great. 
great black cape. And a nose. What a nose of protuberance to point the way to evil deeds. And hair as black as coal from everywhere. And now, to the boards. Forgive him, boys and girls, for he may seem a trifle nasty. Roar! <laughs> Woodcarver, Woodcarver, open your shop. Stromboli the Magnificent, Stromboli the Strong. Stromboli, the world's greatest and meanest puppet master, needs new puppets. Geppetto, where are you? I need new puppets for my traveling show. Geppetto, where are you? Probably on a coffee break. Well, let's see the price tags on these things. What, five gold pieces? I'll leave one and they'll consider themselves fortunate. What's this? He moved. The scrawny puppet moved. Scrawny? And he talked. It's a talking stringless puppet. You must be mine. But where is your price tag? Telegram! Oh, for me? How nice. Roar! Dear Stromboli, Pinocchio is a special stringless puppet. I could never sell him. He has given me what money cannot buy. I would not think of parting with him. Have a wonderful time. Wish you were here, Geppetto. So you're not for sale, eh? We'll see about that. Well, I'll take the, the rest of my wagon. But mark the words of Stromboli the Great. Stromboli the strong, and Stromboli the mean. You little wooden head will be mine. <laughs> is he gone? Good, Pinocchio isn't afraid of anything. Pinocchio, I'm back. Oh, it's just father. Pinocchio, it's almost time for school. School? I don't want to go to school. I'll pretend I'm sick. Pinocchio! Pinocchio! Oh, he's asleep. Pinocchio! Pinocchio, wake up, my son. It's almost time to go to school. Uh, Pinocchio, are, are you feeling ill? Yes, father. Uh, oh, and where are you ill? In your ears? Yes, father. In your eyes? Yes, father. In your nose? Oh, my nose! Why, Pinocchio, I wonder if you're as ill as you say you are. I guess not. I'll go to school. Excellent. At school, you will learn everything. You will learn how to read a book and write a letter, and you will also learn how to paint a picture and sing a song, and you may even learn how to dance. And you'll meet other nice boys and girls who will sing and dance with you. But be careful, Pinocchio. Some little boys and girls will not be so nice. They may play tricks on the teacher or cheat in their lessons, and some may even play hooky from school. Stay away from them, Pinocchio. Go directly to school and then come directly home. Will you do that? Yes, Father. Good. Now, here is the money that I promised you for your new school book. And be sure to wear your hat, for it is very cold outside. Pinocchio, don't you like your hat? No, Father. Well, that's all right. I can give you mine to wear. I have sold it. It was too warm. Now, off you go to school or else you'll be late. <laughs> Careful, Father. Your nose may grow long. All right, Pinocchio. I sold my hat so that you could buy your new school book. I was only trying to be a generous father. Now, off you go to school, and if you don't know the way, just follow those little boys and girls, for they are on the road to school!
wait you there. Goodbye. Something tells me I should go with you. Wait up, Pinocchio. Wait up. And I'll keep an eye on him, too, so Geppetto doesn't have to worry. Well, but I did worry, and with good reason, for danger was lurking on the road to school. What road to school coming up? And that danger could be found in the guise of two most unsavory characters. Foul Fellow was the brains of the duo, J. Worthington Foul Fellow. Down on his luck, perhaps, but still sly as a fox, and with good reason, for a fox he was indeed. And his partner in chicanery, yeah. that's a fancy word for nasty stuff, was the unscrupulous, Her. unprincipled, yeah. uncouth cat by the name of Catnip Kate. Yes. Let's watch. <laughs> oh, neat. Oh, my. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck indeed. A piece of bubblegum, very be too. This is good luck. An omen, my dear. This is our lucky day. That's what you always say. But today is different. There is fortune in the air. I'd settle for lunch. Pinocchio, where are you, miserable toothpick? <laughs> that is Stromboli, the evil puppet master. After you, my dear. Not a bad idea. Fox, cat, come back here. Have you two swindlers seen a puppet? Swindlers? Why the nerve? We are descended from royalty. My uncle was a store for the queen. My mother cut rats for the king. I'll pay you well to find them. My grandfather was on <laughs> Hey? 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 Yes, for the return of Pinocchio, the stringless puppet. And what does he look like? He's made of wood, and he's wearing a yellow shirt with red pants. How much will you pay? Oh, you. Two gold pieces. <laughs> but he's a very special puppet. Well, will you find him? For two gold pieces, the strictest puppet Pinocchio shall be yours. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? You'll find my wagon at the edge of town. Bring him there. No puppet escapes from Stromboli. <laughs> See, I knew this was our lucky day. Think of all the cattle we could buy with two gold pieces. I can taste it already. But where do we look for the stringless puppet? Well, there's a puppet with the red shirt and yellow pants. Do you think it could be him? No harm in asking. Right you are. But when Pinocchio bragged of his father's love, and quite love it was indeed, and showed them the two pieces of silver which I had given him to buy a new school book with, the fox and cat dreamed of a bigger reward. With boiling speed, they cooked up a plan. We should do something for Pinocchio. Like tell him about the Meadow of Miracles. The Meadow of Miracles, of course. The meadow, meadow of, of miracles. miracles. Tell him, dear Worthington. Well, my friend, near here is a meadow where miracles happen. It is called, strangely enough, the Meadow of Miracles. For if you put silver in the Meadow of Miracles, a tree will grow, and silver points in the shape of fruit will blossom. We shall plant your silver coins, and you will be wealthy in no time. Thanks! How can I ever repay you? We'll think of a way. Now go off, Pinocchio, to the Meadow of Miracles. Sweet! After we get the silver, we'll turn it over to Stromboli, the evil puppet master. And the double reward shall be ours. Pinocchio, 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 do not go with Fox and Cat. You must go to school. You're wrong, Jiminy Cricket. I shall get rich in the Meadow of Miracles, and I'll never have to go to school or work again. Do not do this, Pinocchio. You will be very sorry. Just you wait. Come along, dear boy. Think of all the nice things you can buy for yourself. 
Pinocchio was? Jiminy Cricket tried to warn him, but like many little boys and girls, he had to find out for himself. The Meadow of Miracles was nearby, and when they got there, the fox and cat played their wicked trick on poor little Pinocchio. They sounded so generous when they told him he must save his strength for school, and that they would plant his silver for him. Well, they planted the silver, all right, right into their own pockets. Come along, my dear. I saw Stromboli's wagon not far back. We shall find him and collect our other gold. Uh, Pinocchio was so excited for his new tree to grow, he couldn't wait to collect that silver. If only he knew the truth. <laughs> Telegram! For me? Thank you. I'll give you a handsome tip when my silver tree grows. Yeah, right. Oh. Huh? Why, Pinocchio, now you know why all little boys and girls must go to school. All little boys and girls must learn to read and write. I shall read it for you, Pinocchio, but just this once. Dear Pinocchio, what have you done? There will be no silver tree, Pinocchio. The fox and cat have robbed you. The silver that Geppetto got for their hat is gone, and now you have nothing. And Stromboli, the evil puppet master, is on his way here to catch you. And that's not the worst of it. It must be a whale of a problem to be worse than that. You guessed it. Your father, Geppetto, became worried when you did not return from school. He went looking for you on the beach, and a large wave swept him into the sea. A large wave? Here it comes now. Finished reading this telegram while I'm swept into the sea. Ah! Yes, the telegram. There in the sea, a whale opened his jaws and gobbled him up. Poor father, whatever shall I do? I'll tell you what to do. Return home, go to school, and do all the things that would make your father proud. Weather continues fine, Jiminy Cricket. P.S. Look out, here comes John Bully. He's over here, you say? Yes, your evilness, right over here. Hurry, Pinocchio, run and hide. Who can help Pinocchio hide from the evil puppet master? There, over there. Hurry, Pinocchio, run and hide. All right, where is he? He was right here. I don't see him anywhere. Is this a joke? Oh, no, Stromboli. The, those children out there, I bet they've seen him. They don't know anything. Have you two been lying to me just to get your hands on my gold? No. He was here, right here. I saw him, and he gave us these silver coins. I'll take that silver. Thank you. But we should get something. Oh, why, yes, of course. You should get something. That wasn't quite what I had in mind.
Puppet Show. Starring Pinocchio, the puppet with no strings. But first, what do you think of my beautiful dancing puppets? Harlequin. Ooh. Columbine. Ah. Scaramouche. Ah. And now, presenting the world famous puppet with no strings, Pinocchio. Pinocchio the puppet will become Pinocchio the real boy! 
And Pinocchio's new friend, Candlewick, was the first to find out. The masters all said his game was lazy and disobedient. Uh, but they were Pinocchio's friends, and Pinocchio had news. Great news. Yo, Pinocchio! Whoa! We've got to say it goodbye. No school for us. No, no more homework. No more books. No more angry, nasty looks. Far out. Whoa! Where are you going? We're going far away. Far away. Me? 
about that. Just a silly donkey. Pinocchio, is it you? Can it really be you? Father, I found you at last! 
Oh, it's wonderful to see you again, my son. I thought sure I'd... But wait, your ears and a tail. Why, Pinocchio, what has happened? So, I was at school and I was sitting at my desk and all of a sudden, hee-haw! Oh, why, Pinocchio, when will you learn? Now, tell me what really happened and whose fault is it? It was all the teacher's fault. No, Pinocchio, tell the truth. Have you been a bad boy? Yes, a very bad boy. Well, I see that you have donkey fever, and I'll bet you caught it on a place called Pleasure Isle. Why, when I was your age, I nearly went there myself, which is why I'm not angry with you. Besides, how can I be angry when I found my son again? Oh, Father, you're so wonderful. We have to escape. Uh, but, Pinocchio, I cannot swim. You can hop on my back and I can paddle us out of here. No, Pinocchio, I'm, I'm too old and feeble. Save yourself, Pinocchio, save yourself. No, I won't leave without you. But how, Pinocchio? The only way out is through this great creature's mouth and it just ate. It will not open its mouth again for days and days. Whatever shall we do? If only the legend of Sabrina were true, uh, the Blue Fairy would know what to do. If she were real, she would find a way to tell us how to escape. Telegram! For us? How nice. Pinocchio and Geppetto. Force the whale to sneeze and he will have to open his mouth and you can both escape. Hope to see you soon. Yours truly, Sabrina the Blue Fairy. It's true. The legend of Sabrina is true. But how on earth are we supposed to make this monstrous whale sneeze? P.S. Catch a flying fish and pluck a feather from its tail and tickle the whale till he sneezes. It's worth a shot. And here comes a flying fish now. I've got the feather, my son. Now here, tickle the whale. Coochie coochie coo! Ah, ah, ah. It's working, Pinocchio. Do it some more. Coochie coochie coo! Ah, ah, ah. Once more and we'll be free. Ashore. He 
saw that I was safe, laid back on the beach, and Jiminy, I've lost everything.